During the first day of the autumn session of the Meghalaya Legislative Assembly that commenced today, the 9th of September 2022, the Chief Minister of Meghalaya, Conrad K. Sangma, had laid on the floor of the House the Justice Vaifei Judicial Inquiry Report into the death of the late HNLC leader, Cherista Field Thankyu. Some of the highlights of the report state that the former HNLC General Secretary, Cherista Field Thankyu, was arrested on evidence of his involvement in the IED blasts that had taken place in the state between 2020 and 2021. The inquiry committee also received police reports wherein it was established that the identity of one Sanbor Pala was none other than late Cherish the Field Thank you himself. The report of the Justice T. Vaifei Inquiry Commission pointed out that the operation of a quote, well laid plan, unquote, to capture former HNLC leader Cherish the Field Thank you was mishandled and quote, executed poorly, recklessly, hastily, and without proper application of mind, unquote. The report also stated that Quote, the tactical team one in carrying out the operation to arrest the deceased at his residence on August 13, 2021 at about 3 a.m. was culpable of thoughtless and excessive use of force, which resulted in the death of the deceased, late Cherister Field Thankyu, which turned out to be avoidable, unquote. Coming to the killing of the late HNLC leader in the wee hours of 13th August 2021, the report read as follows, quote, The evidence of the state witness number four is that in that meeting, the tactical meeting held prior to the operation, there was no talks regarding intelligence information as to who were present with the deceased at his house on that night, unquote. It further stated that, quote, if the primary objective of carrying out the operation was to capture the deceased alive, the manner in which the raid was conducted unnecessarily gives rise to the impression that that was not so. This is most unfortunate." Unquote. The state witness number four said that they had cordoned off the house of the deceased and called out a few times before forcibly opening the main door to the house. In the darkness and on entry through the corridor, a person had come charging towards him, which prompted him to shout out to the team to stop proceeding further into the corridor. The inquiry report further stated that, quote, when the aggressor did not stop and continued to charge aggressively, at that time, the distance between him, the aggressor, was barely two to three feet. He, fearing imminent attack by the aggressor, was left with no option but, in a split-second decision, fired only one round from his service weapon at the lower portion of the aggressor. That person sustained a bullet injury and collapsed. The other members of the tactical team were behind him." Unquote. As per state witness number four, what followed was the entry of senior police officers into the room where the late militant leader was shot dead. A knife was also found in the room. The commission report also said that the entire exercise defeated the very purpose of capturing the late leader alive. To conclude, the report stated that the presence of Le Thankyu's wife and sons in the house, quote, also never came up for consideration in the tactical meeting. Of course, it is another matter that there was, fortunately, no civilian casualty in the course of the raid. But this cannot be a post facto execute to justify the night raid, unquote.